Okay, so the last part of the Getting Started series will cover a couple of things that we need to do in order to make our app look more at home on uh, iOS. And at the end of this, you'll know everything that's in this template project, and you'll be able to use it directly without repeating all of these steps, but you'll understand everything that's in there and be able to move forward with the tutorial. So the first thing I'm going to do is put in a bunch of text onto this home page. And I want you to see how that looks. So this is the page now. And you notice that the header scrolls up um, with the content. Now, some apps might want that. And if you do, you're done. Um, but a lot of apps leave their header bar at the top, and so the way we do that is on the header element, we use data position equals fixed, and just for completeness, I'll do that on the other header, even though it doesn't have a lot of content. And now you see that the head of R stays at the top. And to see some of the other issues, we actually have to start running it on a device. I'm gonna run it in the emulator. The way you do that with Cordova, is you use the emulate command and you say which platform you want to emulate. And once I do this, it'll bring up the uh, iPhone emulator and start our app in it. And it takes a few seconds to get that going. Here it comes. One of the reasons why I use the browser as my normal viewing um, mechanism is that it's a lot faster, you get a lot um, more turnaround, but you do need to check it on the devices every now and then. So here we'll see that it acts as you imagine. A couple of issues, and we'll go through them. One, it's hard to see this without actually running it. So when you're running the emulator, what you might notice is that there's a slight delay when you click a link and when it actually makes a transition. Um, that's because iOS is waiting for a possibility of a second tap. And um, so there's a 300 millisecond delay. Uh, another problem you'll see is an iOS 7 changed how uh, the status bar interacts here with the, the title bar. Uh, it's now um, put on top of the same area and, and here you can really see how the button overlaps that. And so that's another thing we'd like to fix. So the first problem is addressed in the the fast click library. That's one of the libraries that I think is minimally required for uh, an iOS jQuery mobile Cordova application. It was uh, written by the Financial Times and it's up on GitHub and I'll show you how to use it right now. So we can put that down here and then we need to initialize it in our app initialize. So now this is the first time we're going to be looking at index.js. This is so far as created by uh, the Cordova create command and I'm gonna do a couple of changes in anticipation of what we need to do going forward. I'm gonna use a uh, namespace here because we're gonna have other things that, um, that we're gonna want. I don't want, I don't want to pollute the global namespace. And to keep things simple, I'm gonna just move this all into one. 
and we don't need to respond to that in any way, except. So what this does is when we initialize, we're gonna to attach to a Cordova event that'll let us know when the device is ready. And at that point, we're going to attach uh, fast click to our document body. And what this does is it uses a, um, a, a, an HTML5 trick to get the clicks to react faster. And by attaching it to document body, that gets attached directly to all of our um, elements. And uh, fast clicks with a capital C. Okay, now to get the status bar to behave, we're actually gonna need to use a plugin. So we haven't seen plugins yet. Um, plugins are a way for Cordova to interact with the device um, directly. They are uh, native libraries that get installed into your app and then there are ways to call them from JavaScript. Uh, so anything that can't be done directly with HTML and JavaScript can, can be accomplished with a plugin. So the, the more normal things are accessing the camera, the compass, or the accelerometer, but pretty much anything that you want to be specific to a device um, is going to be handled in a plugin. We add them to our project, again using the Cordova command. Plugin add, and then we have to just give the name of the plugin. Which is the status bar plugin. And that will get installed. And then once that's installed, we have a couple of new configuration uh, elements available to us. So if we add this, now we're telling the plugin that we don't want the status bar to be on top of our web view, so it'll move it down a little. And then we can actually set the status bar's background color I'm just going to set it to a dark gray, but you can set that to match your app or, or whatever you want. These things don't affect the web uh, version of our app, so we'll, in order to see what's going on, we're going to have to emulate it again. Now you see that the app leaves a little room for this for the status bar, and the same is true here. Um, again, so the fast click isn't working, and that's because I forgot to update that. And now we'll see that our links are pretty instantaneous. So, so that takes us through all the features inside the, the template, um, the way you use it, and it's described here in the README, is create your app as we did in the first tutorial. And in these plugins, I recommend a few more that I haven't gone over yet, but th that would be minimally what I suggest add in your platforms, and then just copy this www directory over the one that's there, and take a look at the config in there, because you'll need to update that. Uh, the main thing you'll need to do is fix this to your actual unique name, but also fill in the, the description, your author, and so forth. Um, and you'll be good to go to start your projects, which you'll learn about in the next tutorial series.